The Singapore Maritime Trail 1. Our Heritage. Ahoy! Contrary to popular beliefs, Singapore was not a sleepy fishing village before Sir Stamford Raffles arrived in 1819. In fact, Singapore was described as a thriving port as early as the 14th century. Since then, Singapore has evolved into a premier global hub port and leading international maritime centre. The Singapore Maritime Trail 1 will bring you on a journey that tells the interesting history about iconic landmarks rooted in Singapore's maritime heritage. This is where the trail will take us. First stop, the Maritime Corner at Fort Canning. Fort Canning Hill became an important communication centre after the British established a port here in 1819 because of its strategic position at the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula and its excellent natural harbour. Its communication facility built on the hill was a flagstaff. And the flagstaff made use of the marine flag, signalling systems to inform residents of the arrival of different types of vessels. Each flag represents a letter that can form messages for communication. This provided important information on the arrival, identity, location and status of ships entering the Singapore Harbour. Another maritime feature that can be found at Fort Canning Hill is the Time Ball. The Time Ball is a large painted wooden or metal ball that is dropped at a predetermined time so that navigators can verify and sync their marine chronometers from the ships offshore. The Fort Canning Lighthouse was in operation from 1903 to 1958 and was one of Singapore's most prominent landmarks for ships entering the harbour. The lighthouse was eventually closed when it was overshadowed by tall buildings being built in the area. Let's move on to the Singapore River and see what maritime landmarks we can find. Located near the mouth of the Singapore River, Boat Quay was the busiest part of the old port of Singapore. In its early days, warehouses thriving with economic activities lined along the banks of North and South Boat Quay. Entrepot trade was the country's main enterprise and Boat Quay handled three quarters of the shipping business in the 1860s. Down by the Singapore River is the Fullerton Hotel, which was previously known as Fort Fullerton. Fort Fullerton was constructed with the aim of protecting the town against any naval attack. Another maritime landmark along the river is the Waterboat House, which was the site of the former master attendant's office. Captain William Lawrence Flint was the first master attendant of Singapore. He supervised all water activities until the harbour moved from Singapore River to Keppel Harbour in 1852. He was the supervisor of all harbour activities, including registration of vessels and their cargoes, collection of anchorage and port clearance fees, and supply of fresh water and firewood. Collier Quay also served as an important landing point for the unloading and storage of goods transported along the Singapore River and it grew to become a vital link to Singapore's commercial centre. Clifford Pier, known as the Red Lantern Pier, was commonly referred to as Ang Ping Bei Dao, or Hokkien, or Red Lamp Harbour by the Chinese. Used as a key landing point for sea travellers to and from Singapore, the pier bustled with activities. Clifford Pier ceased operations on 1st April 2006 and was replaced by the Marina South Pier. From a vantage point of around 23 metres, over Singapore's former harbour, Customs House was where officers with the harbour division of the preventive branch of the Department of Customs and Excise stood watch over the inner roads of the harbour for more than three decades. 
Lastly, let's head down to the Tanjung Paga Terminal. When Singapore decided in 1966 to build its first container terminal, not a single shipping line had committed to building container ships for the Europe Far East run. It was a calculated risk by our leaders, which paid off. The first container port, Tanjung Paga Terminal, opened with three container berths in 1972. Following its launch in 1972, the terminal welcomed its first container ship, the MV Nihon, carrying about 300 containers. With the expansion of world trade, Singapore flourished as a global container port. In 2019, Singapore's container throughput reached 37.2 million 20-foot equivalent units. To help you picture this, that's up to 5,000 pairs of shoes or 48,000 bananas multiplied by 37.2 million. Today, there are more than 5,000 maritime establishments in Singapore. Annually, more than 130,000 ships call at Singapore. We have come to the end of the Singapore Maritime Trail 1, where we have traced the history and iconic landmarks rooted in Singapore's maritime heritage. Find out more about Singapore's maritime heritage when you experience the full Singapore Maritime Trail with us soon. Brought to you by the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore.